West 57th, could you wait a minute, please? She would hang out on doorsteps and she would literally camp in people's homes and for weeks on end until they finally went, okay, take the picture. And she'd snap it and that was it. Oh, that's great. Hold on. This is Clint Eastwood. It's not too much to say about this except that it's one of those woman's photographs, you know? <laughs> I need more than that. Let's bring it up a bit. Go ahead. There you go. Stand by and try it again. The CIA fronted the company. The FBI was supposed to be investigating it for cocaine smuggling. And at the same time, the State Department was giving it humanitarian assistance funds. Now, there seems to be a big thing to do about uh, the CIA having uh, connections with, with drugs. Uh, it might be news uh, now, but it's something that has been uh, quite prevalent for quite some time. Black, two, one. This is all about Mike Hewitt. He's kind of the thinking man's comic, and he's very hot right now, getting hotter all the time. And he's really, among comedians, they'll tell you, this guy's the best. Now, I'm not a doctor although I play one on TV. Not a doctor. Hey, pal, I seen your show. You're not even an actor. Give me a reset on your audio. Resetting audio. Well, audio is good, and take it. Welcome to West 57th. Our first story tonight concerns more information on the connection between the Contras in Central America, the United States government, and cocaine. When we first reported that connection three months ago, we told you that the White House and the CIA had used known drug traffickers to arm the Contras. The guns were brought down to the Contras, and the drugs were brought back to the United States. The CIA called our story scandalous defamatory journalism at its worst. The current congressional hearings investigating the Iran-Contra scandal have not dealt with these drug charges, even though many of those accused of drug trafficking worked for Oliver North in the network he set up to supply the Contras. But now there's another committee, just across Capitol Hill, that's taking the drug connection much more seriously. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee has recently started its own hearings behind closed doors. One of the operations that committee will likely look into is the subject of our report tonight. It's an operation that raises disturbing questions about how the American government kept the Contras supplied with guns and money when it was illegal to do so, and who the American government tapped to do the dirty work. The operation involves an obscure little shrimp company that has a strange relationship with the State Department, the CIA, and the men who worked for Oliver North. Our story begins in a sleepy port town in Costa Rica, a few hours south of the Contra War. It is here that those keeping the Contras in guns and money apparently joined forces with those suspected of keeping America supplied with cocaine. It started with a little shrimp company. Four sources say the CIA found it first and used it as a CIA front. The company is called Frijoríficos de Punta Arenas. It has facilities in Costa Rica, and an American partner tucked away in the back of a Miami shopping mall. The Miami partner is called Ocean Hunter. It was a company for seafood, importation of seafood. It was just a front. What they really wanted to import was cocaine. Jesus Garcia worked in the secret weapons network set up to supply arms to the Contras. He says while Ocean Hunter was importing cocaine, it was exporting guns and money to the Contras. He is now in prison on an unrelated weapons charge, due for release later this year. The CIA, they have a lot of fun companies for, uh, for moving money, arms, supplies, people. Ocean Hunter was established uh, as a front. 
In March of 1985, Jesus Garcia helped load a secret illegal weapon ship into the Contras that left from this Fort Lauderdale airport. He is one of two witnesses who said the flight was paid for by a partner in the Ocean Hunter Company. We load a shipment of arms, it's about six tons. There was machine guns, 60s, motor tubes, C4. The weapons were flown to El Salvador to a military air base the staging area for most of the secret weapons flights arranged by the White House and the CIA. Garcia says the arms he loaded up had been stored in Miami safe houses, including the home of Francisco Paco Chanis, a partner in the Ocean Hunter Company. Garcia says Paco Chanis was running more than guns. Remember, Paco Chanis was moving out of the north on shipping. Paco Chanis had a cocaine shipment 10 feet away from all of the North armed shipment. Yet, uh, nothing is said, nothing will be said, because Paco could just turn around and put the finger on the U.S. government. The people involved in the network were involved in drugs. Including Ocean Hunter. Including Ocean Hunter. John Mattis is a public defender in Miami who stumbled on the murky arms and drug network while representing Jesus Garcia. It was the FBI agents themselves in interviews with Mr. Garcia that turned to Mr. Garcia when he says, indeed, it was Francisco Chanis whose house I picked up weapons from. They turned to Mr. Garcia and said, we're investigating him for drugs. That was January 1986. We're now a long time beyond that and nothing's happened. Hello. Hi, Papa Chanis here, please. We went looking for Francisco Paco Chanis at the Miami office where Ocean Hunter is still in business, whatever business it is that they're in. No one here wanted to talk. Could you tell me how to get a hold of I don't know about Mr. Chanis. Mr. Chanis owns this. Can you tell me what Ocean Hunter does, sir? Or who you might be, I'm Jane. What does Ocean Hunter do? Well, I don't know, I'm just visiting here. You're just visiting? Yeah. Who, well, who works here? Well, I don't know, I'm just delivering something. Well, what kind of stuff are you delivering? An envelope, that's it. Hmm? An envelope. Well, do you know what they do for a living? I don't know. It's a, Can you tell a me lot of... Wait. Here you are, Paco. I'm the manager here, ma'am. Out. Oh, what's please. your name? Out. Though he refused to identify himself, two sources later said this man is Paco Chanis. He declined our request for an interview. Ocean Hunter is not only accused of helping the Contras with weapons, they also allegedly gave cash. During the ban on government aid, Ocean Hunter's money man says he secretly delivered $200,000 a month to the Contras. Now, there seems to be a big thing to do about uh, the CIA having uh, connections with, with drugs. Uh, there might be news uh, now, but it's something that has been... Uh, quite prevalent for quite some time. Ramon Millan Rodriguez was one of the biggest dealers in dirty cash in the world before he was sentenced to 35 years in prison for money laundering and cocaine trafficking. He says his clients included the Colombian cocaine cartel, the CIA, and Ocean Hunter. Government sources confirm all three claims. Did anybody in the CIA ever suggest that you should work with Ocean Hunter? An individual with alleged government connections, which I cannot say what agency of the government he dealt with, because I don't know, asked me to look favorably on this company. On the Ocean Hunter account? Yes. To please handle their money? Yes. Please do what they needed. Please duck large amounts of cash, make payments to the Contras, whatever they needed. Whatever they needed. Congressional sources identified the individual as this man, Felix Rodriguez, a veteran CIA man who became a key player in Oliver North's network. When Rodriguez appeared before the Iran-Contra committee, he was not asked about drugs or Ocean Hunter. Did he say whether there was anything in it for you? There was nothing in it for me except goodwill. When did he... I need a lot of goodwill. When did he ask you to do that? Uh, late 84. So somebody you know in the past has worked for the CIA, may or may not be working for the CIA when he approaches you, may be working for the NSC, for example. 
Could have been working for Oliver North, could have been working for William Casey. Who knows? He just comes and says, do what you can for this ocean hunter firm. Precisely. Hello? When we went back to Costa Rica to ask if some of that cash had been moved through Ocean Hunter's partner company, we couldn't even get inside the gate. Hi, can, we, can we please speak to Mr. Nunez? We were told the company director, Moises Nunez, doesn't even work here. Uh, I'd like to speak with Mr. Nunez or make an appointment. Yeah, just like you. Yeah. Well, would you would you be Mr. Nunez? Can I talk to you for a moment, please, sir? I'm Jane Wallace from CBS News, and I just want to speak with you. For a moment. None of the Ocean Hunter principals would answer our inquiries by registered letter about money laundering, Felix Rodriguez, or drug trafficking. Outside of the United States, drug dealers are very powerful people. They have cash. The CIA deals primarily with items outside of the U.S. If they're going to deal in foreign countries' policies and politics, they're going to run up against or run with the drug uh, dealers. Uh, it cannot be done any other way. How does that relate to Ocean Hunter? Ocean Hunter is somewhere in between all of this. Um, uh, they obviously have contacts on both sides. CIA and drug dealers. Yes, and they obviously uh, uh, put these contacts to a um, mutually beneficial use. The State Department apparently found Ocean Hunter's contacts useful, too. In January of 1986, the State Department began pouring humanitarian aid money into the company accounts. According to documents obtained by West 57th, they deposited at least $200,000 into these accounts at the same time the FBI was investigating Ocean Hunter for smuggling drugs. Is there any chance that those checks went to a company that was not involved in this drug smuggling, not involved in the gun running? The people were the same people. The two were part and parcel of the same entity. The man overseeing that account for the State Department was Robert Owen. Owen worked for Oliver North. His code name was The Courier. When Owen testified recently before the Iran-Contra Committee, he was not asked about Ocean Hunter and drug running. Owen declined our request for an interview. Does it bother you that Ocean Hunter was allegedly running drugs at the same time getting State Department humanitarian assistance money. Absolutely. Of course it bothers me. Why does it bother you? Because we shouldn't be involved with those kinds of people in so-called humanitarian efforts or in any official or unofficial efforts of the United States government. Senator John Kerry is a Democrat on the Foreign Relations Committee. When he discovered taxpayers' money was going to suspected drug dealers, he reported it to the FBI. Nothing happened. From my perspective, what has been disturbing is that the information that we received April of last year uh, and transferred to appropriate authorities within United States agencies has not been acted on to this point in time. In the spring of 1986, at the same time Senator Kerry was reporting Ocean Hunter to the FBI, the FBI already had sent an agent here to Costa Rica. The FBI agent was supposed to be investigating this man, John Hull. Hull had been on the receiving end of the weapons allegedly paid for by the partner in Ocean Hunter. We've been following Hull's career for two years. He was a key player in Oliver North's weapons network. Eight sources name Hull as a former CIA operative. A half dozen name Hull as being involved with cocaine. Are you in the shrimp business? <laughs> no, I'm not in the shrimp business. I'm not in the drug business, I'm not in the arms business, I'm not in the explosive business. He's the one who received arms from Francisco Chanas's flights. He's the one who received those shipments into his own property in northern Costa Rica. He knew who was organizing those flights. He spent enough time in South Florida. He's met with the people in the network because he's part of that network. So he certainly knew who Ocean Hunter Seafood was and who was behind Ocean Hunter Seafood. Do you know the fellow that runs this Ocean Hunter firm? Never heard of it. 
you have any evidence, any proof, any ideas of whether the large sums of cash you had delivered to the Contras, whether it actually made it to the Contras, whether oh, it actually have... went to beans and rice or bullets or... Uh, there's no way to trace cash. What's your guess? My guess is that not all of it got there. <laughs> You know, but I'm a cynic. Where would it have ended up? I would say that you're going to find a lot of it in uh, nest eggs, uh, foreign accounts, waiting for the day when uh, the Contra issue is no longer popular, when uh, Congress votes it out of, ex out of existence, uh, and they have to do something else for a living. Two weeks ago, under heavy security, Ramon Millan Rodriguez was brought to Capitol Hill. Ocean Hunter, it appears, is just the beginning. Under oath, he told senators that the drug connection is much larger, that he'd handled a direct $10 million in cash contributions from the Colombian cocaine cartel to the Contras. The man who asked him to handle the money, he testified, was Felix Rodriguez. The Foreign Relations Committee has issued subpoenas for former CIA operative Rodriguez former CIA operative John Hull, and is seeking testimony now from Robert Owen. Oliver North said in the hearings this week that reports linking him to drug smuggling are patently untrue. The State Department refuses comment. The CIA says it does not engage in or condone drug smuggling. On its relationship with Ocean Hunter, the CIA says it cannot confirm or deny intelligence activities or associations. The FBI claims it is still investigating Ocean Hunter and cannot comment on a pending investigation.